Hello, I'm Afro Raymond, and welcome again to our series, in which this episode will be examining the secret society, the ways in which essential information about our country and the truth about what has happened in our country has been deliberately suppressed by those in a position to know better and to do better, to whom much is given, much is expected, yet I have to say I am disappointed. I spoke earlier on about a so-called political divide and a degree of cozy consensus to keep things in a comfort zone. I spoke about a code of silence in relation to the CL financial bailout. And I'm going to amplify that discussion at a national level now about the secret society. And I'm going to say that there are substantial blocks of information about how our country really, really runs that remain concealed and need to be revealed. And I'm going to start from minor examples and work my way up to some really big examples. Back at the beginning of this year, 2016, there was a whole scandal and a controversy around the then Minister of Housing and Urban Development. That lady was called Marlene MacDonald. She's in the People's National Movement. She's an attorney at law. And she was accused of a number of things. She was accused of, of breaking the rules regarding who she hired in her parliamentary office. Hiring, I believe it was, it was um, a, a, a male friend, a lover maybe, and his, his relatives. She was also accused of helping that individual to get a house. In other words, um, using her ministerial influence to get the individual a house from the Housing Development Corporation, and so on and so on. And uh, the advocacy group Fixing TNT used the Freedom of Information Act to obtain from the Parliament the records of Marlene MacDonald's um, parliamentary expenses and who she had hired and so on. And uh, they made a loud complaint about some of the facts that were revealed in that. And to cut a long story short, Miss MacDonald eventually exited the cabinet. It's, it, it's a little unclear to me at this stage whether she was fired or whether she resigned or what. But the fact is she wasn't there anymore. And in fact, the, the Rowley cabinet, Dr. Rowley's cabinet, suffered its first casualty. And Fixing TNT went one stage further and made an application to the parliament to have uh, expenses revealed for the other details of employment and so for the other 40 members of parliament. In March this year, I joined up with two or three other organizations. Trinidad and Tobago Transparency Institute, Disclosure Today, and the Constitution Reform Forum. And I made an application to the Parliament, the four of us together, myself as an individual, and those three organizations. And the case I made out to the Parliament was like this. Given that you had already published the then Minister MacDonald's information, there could be no case to resist publishing the other 40. Because it couldn't be that it was right and proper to publish one person's information, but it was somehow exempt to publish the other people's information. And then given that in fact you, had, you, you were then in a position where legally you had to publish all 41, we believed that it made sense to do an open database. So we're taking a different approach to the whole question. And this is one of the things I want to discuss here, the old question of open data. We're taking a different approach to the old question and saying that in fact, that information should be published as a routine. It should be published going back 10 years. We went back 10 years. I think the date we went back to was the 1st of January 2005. And we need to get information on all the members of parliament, all 41 of them, going back 10 years. Information about who they employed, where their offices were, what rent did they pay, what were their parliamentary expenses, and so on. So that in fact, we have a database, a searchable database, about how our members of parliament actually conduct themselves on the financial angle of things. In other words, we wanted full disclosure from our legislature. We haven't had a reply yet. We're still in discussion with the Parliament. I'm hopeful. We're still in negotiation with them. Okay? It wasn't a Freedom of Information application. It was a proposal, a formal proposal from four entities, myself as, counting myself as an entity. 
and we're still in discussion. I expect to hear something before the end of the year. So that's really important for us to understand. Those are our staff, those members of parliament, up to and including Dr. Rowley, who is the current prime minister, and His Excellency Anthony Kimona. Those are our staff. They may be high level staff, but they work for us. We pay their salaries. They're supposed to do their job to the best of their ability and within the law, in the public interest. Therefore, we have every right to know what they're doing. But it takes us another interesting point, talking about the secret society. So two tremendous constitutional outrages took place during the People's Partnership Administration between 2010 and 2015. The first of those constitutional outrages took place on the 21st of August, 2011 when a state of emergency was declared in our country. And I want to say to you, I think that state of emergency was a complete, I said it at the time, and I'll say it again, the state of emergency was a complete outrage. No reason was ever given. And I want to be clear, no reason was ever given. I hope you listen to this, Anand Ram Logan, and Kanan, Kamala Prasad Bissessa, and all of you, you listen to it. No reason was ever given. Reasons were given. Conflicting reasons. One reason today, another reason tomorrow, another reason the next day. To my friends in NJAC, you're all part of that situation. I haven't heard any explanation from you about what happened, including my late and, and, and beloved friend, Makandal Daga. I heard no explanation. Okay? It's a moment of shame for our country. We could declare a commission a state of emergency in this country and lock up 8,000 people. In the words of my friend Rhoda Barrett, people who resemble John Sandy. Okay? And no explanation was given. But it goes further because they're talking to a secret society. You see, we elected a different government on the 7th of September 2015, didn't we? Or did we? We elected a different government on the 7th of September 2015. And they have control of all the cabinet notes, they have control of all the records. In fact, they campaigned about accountability, transparency. And good governance, I want you to listen to me. Be looking at the so-called political divide in the face and the empathy. Why hasn't the PNM administration under Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, who is somebody I have considerable esteem for, why haven't you published the information? Why haven't you told us the concerned citizens of this country? What is the real, real reason behind that scandalous state of emergency on the 7th of, uh, 20, 21st of August 2011? What is the reason for this silence? Let's get to the second constitutional outrage, and maybe some of the viewers could start to see what I'm really talking about. The second constitutional outrage, which was so bad, so nasty, I've come to call it, I gave it a special title, a three-word title, PPP. It was a kind of a joke because the last administration was under the, under the initials of PP. So it was a plot to pervert parliament. And of course, we're talking about the Section 34 scandal that commerce, that bacchanal, that took place in our parliament, where a particular law was passed through the parliament. It changed from the lower house to the upper house. Nobody could tell me why it changed. The 10-year rule is too detailed to go into in this video. It's a short clip. It changed from the lower house to the upper house. You got support in the upper house, and then literally, in the dead of night, that law was taken to the then president, Professor George Maxwell Richards on the night of our 50th anniversary of our independence in this country. That was Friday the 31st of August 2012. And I understand that it was late in the night that it took it to President George Maxwell Richards for him to sign. They extracted a section from that law, the section we now know as Section 34. They extracted a section from that law and took it for President Max Richards to sign. And he signed it. So there's two things that have never been explained. Number one, why this change, the quiet shift is what I've called it, from the lower house to the upper house. Number two, why was Section 34 selected for implementation before the supporting conditions had been met? You don't know. I don't know either. And what's interesting about it is that we as people who are thinking about the future of our country had to be more rigorous. At what time 
was that law taken to Professor Max Richards to sign? Max Richards is still alive. People should be pursuing Max Richards for that. All of the scholars at UE and UDT pursue him. What time was that? Is that the time of night? Because I understand it was after 10 o'clock in the night. I want you all to understand what I'm telling you all. After 10 o'clock on a Friday night of a public holiday of our 50th independence, Friday the 31st of August 2012, after 10 o'clock in the night, you go and you meet a 79-year-old man to sign one section in an act. That's what we've seen in this country. What time did he sign it? And more to the point, how many acts are taken to the president to sign any night? Why isn't this done during normal business hours? What is this? We need some clarity. We need some honesty. We don't need another ounce of secrecy. Thank you. Thanks for following this episode in which we dealt with the secret society in which we are all locked. We have to fight for clarity. We have to fight for honesty. We have to fight for transparency. We have to fight for integrity. We have to do so with a measure of humanity. If you want to follow the work, you can tune into afroraymond.net. If you'd like to participate in work like this, you can join one of the organizations, Trinidad and Tobago Transparency Institute, or Disclosure Today. Or you could join an organization with a slightly different focus, which is the Constitutional Reform Forum, which deals with issues concerning our nation's constitution for a better life for us and for future generations. Thank you for tuning in.